All right, this is uh, section four, and it is about the memory hierarchy. And I just want to take a minute to remind you to um, be making sure that you make your own copy of these notes. It's going to be the best way for you to learn. Um, so if you think about a uh, memory that your processor should access, as, you know, to get instructions and data, what would be the ideal characteristics of that memory? So say you're buying RAM <clears throat> for your laptop. What do you want? Um, let's say cost isn't a concern to start with. You probably want a lot of memory, uh, as big as you can get. Uh, and uh, you want it to be fast, right? So that's why you pay for DDR4 or whatever generation uh, we're at now. Um, so the, the ideal memory has two main characteristics. So infinitely fast and infinitely large. And I guess you could add free to that too. Uh, nobody would complain about that. So the memory hierarchy that I'm going to show you, it really applies to general purpose computers like your laptop or a server or whatnot, not necessarily uh, to, the, to the board that we're using uh, in the lab. And so we're going to do a diagram here, and uh, I'm going to leave a couple of um, couple of blank lines, two. And right at the top of the hierarchy, we have the registers. And I know that you did uh, MTE 262 and 2A. Uh, you learned about uh, digital logic. So I'm sure that you learned how to build like an SR latch and then from there how to make something like a D flip-flop. Um, and you can combine a bunch of flip-flops into a unit, say 32 of them or 64 of them, and that's a register. So you can load data in and then it will hold that data until you load a new value in. So registers, um, <clears throat> let's just uh, annotate that. So these are flip-flops. And they're about as fast as you can get. So you can, you know, uh, enable them or read from them, read and write to them in the same clock cycle. Okay, so we've got registers. Now you got a limited number. So on the ARM processor, uh, there are 16 general purpose registers. One of them is actually um, register 15 is actually the program counter. ARM's kind of weird that way. Um, but anyway, um, I, I'm thinking other processors like MIPS, they would have, say, 32 registers. Um, there was a, an Intel processor, the Itanium, that had, I believe it was 128 registers. You couldn't access them all at once. They would window them. But anyway, so you got a limited number of these. And then your main memory is going to come down a bit lower. You're going to move data from main memory into these registers. Uh, but there's usually step in between. So uh, you may have heard of the term cache before, so that's going to come next. And I'll, I'll make it a little bit bigger than the registers. So cache uh, memory is usually made with SRAM, which we talked about recently. So static RAM is fast, um, but it's relatively expensive because it takes about six transistors per bit that you're storing. Okay, so the cache sits between your, your processor and your main memory. So let's make our main memory um, a little bit bigger again. And so our instructions and data, you know, our, our processor will say, get instruction at address X and your cache controller will get that request from the processor. It'll check the cache first to see if the instruction's there. And if it's not, it'll go to main memory. And um, the thing about the cache is it's smaller, so it can't hold all the data you're working with, but it's very fast. So it'll hold a subset of the stuff that you used recently. So if you don't have the stuff in the cache, it'll go to main memory and bring it in. And your main memory, uh, you can 
probably remember what that is. It's not SRAM, it is DRAM, dynamic RAM. So it's, uh, you know, it takes fewer transistors to implement, requires less uh, silicon area, so it's cheaper, but it's slower. And when I say slower, um, we're talking in a general purpose computer hundreds of times slower than the processor clock speed. So you definitely need to have caches. And there's one more level below main memory. Uh, so I guess I could ask, you know, what's bigger and slower than main memory? And um, that would be your secondary storage. So secondary storage. So let's make that bigger still. And secondary storage is either your hard disk drive or solid state drive. And those are another order of magnitude slower than your DRAM is. All right, so now let's put some labels to the right of, um, to the right of our diagram here. So I'm gonna put uh, capacity and speed and cost per bit. So actually I'm gonna go back to the ideal memory and I'm gonna add free or infinitely cheap, I guess, if you're trying to be consistent there. All right, so, um, <clears throat> so as far as capacity goes, obviously we've got smaller capacity at the top. So small at the top and large at the bottom. All right, uh, speed registers are gonna be your fastest, your secondary storage is gonna be your slowest. So fast at the top of the hierarchy, slow at the bottom of the hierarchy. My ruler uh, likes to slide around on the glass of my tablet, so my line's not quite straight. Anyway, and cost per bit. But registers are your most expensive, so I'm going to put $3 signs there. Think of this as like a Yelp rating, and $1 sign at the bottom for cheap. Let's draw a line. Oops, there's my ruler sliding again. All right. So, um, <clears throat> so the hierarchy um, emulates the ideal memory. So it's, it's a, a bunch of pragmatic trade-offs. As you go up the hierarchy, if your data is there, you're going to get it a lot faster, but it's got limited storage. Uh, as you go down the hierarchy, you've got more storage, um, but it's going to be sl slower.